Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Hi, welcome, welcome to Live, Love, Thrive Women's Empowerment Hour brought to you by 360karma.com. We hope that you're joining the conversation on Facebook and talking about women's empowerment on our Twitter and Instagram at My360Karma. Today I have on an amazing actress. She's breaking all the rules in Hollywood and trailblazing with her new role on SEAL Team. Please give a warm welcome to Tony Trucks. Hello. Hi, Tony. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Oh, you bet. You bet. I love what you're doing. Uh, it's always nice to see a strong military woman in a <laughs> role that hasn't been done before. Yeah. And how exciting for you to get cast in such a role yeah right? I'm very excited to break the barriers yes yes yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be able to portray um, a woman of this caliber um, in, in right now I think it's even more important than ever I think so I think so that's why we're doing this show like bringing on all the trailblazers because there's it. a lot of people out there <laughs> women that are really making inroads and in in different industries and so I like talking about Hollywood because it's been so male dominated and yeah. it's so nice to see it start to change a little bit yeah um, uh, you know my audience always likes to kind of know people's background mm. and you know how how did you get to be this you know Hollywood actress which is very exciting to people around the country especially where you're from right <laughs> yeah in Michigan a real small town right yeah. yeah I grew up in a really tiny town in Michigan uh, called Manistee Michigan and mm -hmm. it's an old Victorian um, uh, you know, Victorian port city, so it's uh, has lots of Victorian homes, and um, but it's tiny. It's like seven thousand people. And a Victorian playhouse. Yeah, Victorian said. playhouse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that sounds uh, really cool. James Earl Jones got to start there as well, yeah. ironically. Oh my gosh! Um, wow. Yeah, it's really kind of a neat community. And uh, despite did you know him? Um, I have met him several times. Yeah, oh, he's wow. wonderful. Uh, he was long gone by the time I was uh, came into the town. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, you definitely aren't the same age. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's great, and uh, you know his his legacy lives on. And uh, the the playhouse was built 1902 wow. there, and it's um, really special. It's and so sort of despite being in a very tiny town. Uh, they really valued the arts, so we had a old playhouse where we could do community theater all the time, and mm -hmm. we had um, several dance teachers, and we had a um, art deco movie theater that was sort of dilapidated growing up, but we, you know, were able to use it. And so I really could exhaust all of my interests yeah. in the community. That is really uh, unusual, isn't it? That in such a small town, it would be so cultural and yeah, all about I would theater. Think so. And how lucky for you! Yeah, so many yeah. people are always trying to, you know, get out of Dodge so that they can follow their dreams, but I I felt like yeah. I was really able to, you know, exercise all of the things that I wanted to do. I could sing where I wanted to sing, dance, act. Honestly, by the time I was 16, they were sort of kicking me out. They're like, you did it all. Get yeah. out of here. Go, <laughs> go find something else. That's um, great. And then uh, what was your first, what age did you start acting and what was the first role? Sure. Um, well, I started doing, um, I was quite a, a tomboy growing up, so, because I grew up with yeah. just brothers. Me too. What a surprise. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would just, like, run around the town shoeless yeah. for some reason. I'm like, I'm not wearing shoes. I don't know why. <laughs> but, like, um, so I started out dancing. I just mm -hmm. sort of wandered shoeless into the dance studio, and the teacher took pity on me <laughs> and was like, at some point, your father does need to pay. Um, <laughs> and uh, so in... When I was about seven, I did a, my first play at the theater, and it was Sweet Charity. Oh, my gosh. And I love that. You know, I think that's the first show I ever saw. Really? Not not with you in it, but... <laughs> I was like, you were there at the Ramsdale <laughs> Civic Players? Not there, um, but yeah. I think uh, I had it like a someone from the family that they called an aunt, yes. Aunt Anita, and she took me to see that. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I had actually... My dad had taken me to see The Most Happy Fella uh -huh. um, at, at the theater, and there was a little girl that sort of was, like, pushing a cake across the stage, and I was like, I did not get the memo that we were looking for little girls. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I was just like, 
stop the presses. Right. How can I get into this? So my dad found an audition. It was ironically the next day. So that and when you saw that first show, you're like, I'm in. Yeah. I, that's I was what like, I, I was like, do. what do you mean? Kids are doing this? What do yeah. you mean? This is a job? Wow. You know, yeah. and as soon as I was just hooked immediately. And yeah. so then he Have you ever done someone, anything else or just acting? Because, um, I mean, everybody's a starving artist, right? And oh. So, so you've done other things? No. I mean, no? Well, Just well, I've, um, you know, I, in the summertime, I have, like, you know, been a waitress, yeah. you know. But really, I've What been, actor hasn't, really? Right. right. <laughs> I've been very, very fortunate. I started working um, in college and really mm -hmm. haven't stopped. And, um, you, you know. You are I've, fortunate. What do you attribute that to? You're a good to? babysitter, though. You should uh. know this. My secret to success. I love that. I do have a grandson, so. Let me know. We'll keep that in mind. If <laughs> doesn't work out, I will be over. <laughs> oh, you don't do it anymore. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my subsidy. <laughs> That's your backup plan, yeah, huh? right. I don't think you're going to need one. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, um, you also were sharing with me that there was like this little town nearby an hour away or something, Interlochen? Yeah, Interlochen. Um, that Which, was another sort of like happy accident like a, for me. It's yeah. a, um, you know, world-renowned arts camp and academy. Yeah. And, and I wonder if a lot of people have heard it. I had not heard of it. Yes. But it sounds like you, you described it as so, like this magical place in the woods. It and is. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to go see this. It's very, you know, well-known yeah. amongst, you know, wild theater You're sure it's real? Place. You sure it's exist? You didn't know? Yeah. Well, they're fairies. I'm not sure. Um, but we it have is, those here. There's little like cabins in the woods. So yeah. As you're sort of walking through these little shacks, you just mm -hmm. hear people practicing and singing and doing all these things. And it's wonderful. You know, Felicity Hoffman went there and Jewel. And, you know, I was at my first summer there. I spent with Josh Groban. Oh, my you know, gosh. Wow. A, um, you mean highly, he was there and you were there? We yeah. were in the we yeah. were in the exact same program. We yeah. studied act, our first acting classes were together. We did Sweden, Sweeney Todd together. Oh, my gosh. Um, how cool. So it was a highly sought after establishment for any young artist and you mm -hmm. could go there for creative writing um you could be an academic major did well you like saying. sweeney todd i didn't like it you didn't I, care well i i went to see it on broadway with yes. patty lapone because I, I would go see anything she's in yes and then i was like oh my gosh the storyline is like kind of creepy isn't it it's, it's very dark, but, you know, <laughs> enter Sondheim. You like dark? <laughs> uh, I think I have a fondness for it because it was the first musical that I did. Um, you were I, with Josh Groban. Does it get any better than that? Come well, on, right? Well, before he was Josh Groban. We were just like, that's good. It's got a great Before voice. he was Josh yeah. Groban. Um, was any Josh Groban then? But I know what you mean. Yes, you know, he was uh, always wildly talented and always yeah. very kind. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. He, he did a great job uh, hosting the... Uh, was it the Tonys? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Josh is really, you know, he's super talented. Got Would it. you ever go back and do something on Broadway or are you totally TV film bound? No, I would love to. Yeah. I would love to. It's just about, you know, all the opportunity and schedule and all the, all the things. Yeah. You know, but um, absolutely. It's At some my point. Achilles heel, you know, I need to yeah. knock it off the list. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, on the bucket list. Absolutely. Yeah. And just something that yeah. was on that track and then my life just took a turn. But yeah. I, I have a, great love for it and I make a pilgrimage there every year and just see a lot of shows so, so people want to know you know have you had any obstacles you know coming up through the ranks I think sure. hardly anybody escapes that I do know you you had mentioned I think that your parents had divorced yeah my parents are yeah. divorced very young so I don't right. have a vivid memory of them together at all and was that like traumatic for you or did that um, impact your life in any way give me the number to my therapist and then she's <laughs> going to tell you um, I don't think she'll tell me anything but <laughs> Um, I, f I see a book coming. Right, right. right. I smell a memoir. Um, no, I think that it was ultimately wildly positive. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I was at so young that um, it was more like, oh, two bedrooms? <laughs> you know, two houses? What? Yeah, you, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, all those things. You wish probably, you know, parents talk to you a little bit more about it because right. kids are so intuitive. Yeah. Um, but I think it was really positive. My parents are two very, very different humans, and I was able to navigate them better apart than I ever could have together. Wow. But um, that took therapy to figure that one out. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, kids are savvy. I think that I figured yeah. it out pretty quickly. You know, it's like, who do you go to? You, yeah. know, you, gotta, you know, so. Yeah. Well, you do seem like an old soul. So oh, you, thank you. Right? Yeah. 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 So you figured it out at a young age. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. I think, I think that yeah. kids do. They, you know, they want to survive so. so both parents are cheering you on yes yeah. yes definitely and the whole hometown oh my gosh my hometown <laughs> couldn't be more supportive if you paid them they are wild i i've made a concerted effort as i've 
had some success to always bring my success back because mm -hmm. I thought that it was important for big things to feel very accessible to kids in small towns. I love so any time that. that I've had like even a guest star role, mm -hmm. uh, anything the like local watering hole will show it. Mm -hmm. They'll create a curated menu about mm -hmm. it. Um, and so even when I had SEAL Team, yeah. um, well, kind of fast forward, we worked with Michael Moore to refurbish our um, Art Deco movie theater to wow. revitalize it. Wow. Michael Moore, the documentary yes, filmmaker? Yes, oh my gosh. from Michigan, yes. And so he's he, amazing. He's incredible. Yeah. And he helped us to revitalize. So we had a big, big grand opening for that. So that's totally oh. restored to its, you know, former glory. And when we, when SEAL Team premiered last year, we had a big red carpet premiere there. Oh, how and fun. CBS in your was, hometown? Yeah, they were so what supportive. And we had a step and repeat and we aired it live on two big screens. And, oh my gosh. Um, it was, and the news stations came, and uh, we honored our local military men and women as they came in, and it was, you know, people wore their dress blues and all the things. It was really just fun. And I would think that would be like one of the biggest highs is, it is. is to go back to your home. It is. It's fun. It yeah, just where feels... everybody loves you. They're real. They're yeah. down to earth. You know. Yeah. yeah. But I think that when, especially when you're in tiny town, things yes. can feel so far away. Yeah. Where you're like, ah, you know, I remember yeah. like watching the Cosby Show. Like, can I ever get yeah. to root? Yeah. you know um and, and here you are you have somebody right there going oh yeah yeah there's that, a road <laughs> that's really cool and what was your first big break um um as i said you know i felt very lucky because i worked all through college doing summer stock mm -hmm. which was yeah. such an invaluable tool because you know you're doing a different show every 10 days you know you're just firing yes. on all yeah cylinders, oh no right? it's incredible and then from there you got your first tv role yes yeah. so i was in new york and i was there for two years maybe mm -hmm. and i auditioned for my first television show and it was for a show called a barber shop on showtime mm -hmm. and that i you know just kept getting a little further and at that time i and i still do i had a rule that i just want to do one new thing a year Mm -hmm. whatever it is yeah. and so when I auditioned for the TV show I thought well I did it you yeah know? and then when I got the screen test I thought oh my god I have another new thing and then yeah. it just kept getting further and further then and have I you kept that it. have you kept that that you do one new thing yes. every year yeah yep. what a great goal because yeah. you know whatever your intention is that's what manifests so yeah. what a wonderful intention well it's so funny you're yeah. saying this because I was looking through a book last night and when I was waiting to hear about Barbershop, I wrote myself a letter. Oh, I And I love said, that. oh, well, if, you know, if you don't get it. I wrote it on, like, the W stationery in Westwood because that's where they had me. And I was like, you know, you're going to be fine, you know. And all these things saying, you know, don't worry. This is your thing for the year. You did your thing. And I was so nervous that I, had like, had this long letter. And I even wrote on the outside, don't worry, don't worry. It's going to be great. You did a good job. And I said, if you don't get it, open this letter. And I, that letter is still sealed in my Oh, my God. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> That makes me cry. So someday, I don't know when I'll open it. I thought, oh, oh my should I God. open this? But no, it's kind of special. You know, so. and, and they always say, and that was perfect what you did, is to set the intention but to let go. Yeah. And look at the result. Right. You know, when you, know you let thing. go. Yeah. Prepare for the, my mom says, prepare for the worst because you can handle the best. So I said, well, worst case, I don't get it and I'll have this beautiful letter. Oh, my you gosh. Know? And um, I love that. But I'm going to go sits. home and write a letter. Yeah, write a letter. I don't letter. know what it's going to say. I think it's going to be about my, my, my upcoming event and TV series called She Angels where we have a, a panel of female, uh, you know, prominent women that are successful listening to the pitches of female entrepreneurs. Yes. And then they get behind them with funding, and we film their journeys, and we uh -huh. give them experts to help them along the way. Anyway, so I I'm like going to go that. home and write that letter. Do it. I like write it. A, write a letter to I like yourself, it. little yeah, gift. Yeah, and I'm going to seal it. And It's yeah. sort of like, you know, when you, you change your sheets before you go on vacation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you come home, and you're like, oh, who did this for me? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so what is the... Uh, what is the challenge in Hollywood still? I mean, you and I talked about this Me Too movement. Yeah. And you were saying that really any woman, any attractive actress in Hollywood has probably had to deal with some sort of sexual overtures or sexual harassment. And that I love what you shared with me that it used to be that you used to feel like, well, they're so powerful. And who are you that if you were to bring it up, you know, nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to believe you. But how wonderful this Me Too shift 
and having funds to help get behind people can help up and coming actresses not be afraid to speak up. Sure. And so, what a wonderful shift, huh? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, I think it's a. I think um, we have a ways to go, but it's getting there. Right. Yeah, I know it's not. I think exactly it's special that to be in the entertainment industry right now as the tides are turning. Yes. You know, what mm -hmm. a what a um, And I think there'll be time. more female roles because we are starting to push for more female writers, directors, yes. producers, and that will change who's cast and what is written about yes. and more female leads. And, and more female stories exactly. being told in an organic way. Yeah. And I know you've been on some other shows. I know you were on NCIS, which my friend Scott Williams is uh, one of the creators of that. Oh, yes. What a great show. Yes. And um, yeah, and I do the New Orleans version. I, um, right. Yes, and they're, they're just some of my favorite people. Um, Chris Silver, um, who is the showrunner over there, is one of my favorite humans, and he's just so wonderful. And they do do an exceptional job yeah. when you want to talk about diversity and women. Mm -hmm. They're 50-50 across the board. So wow, that's great. They're a show, too. That's on CBS, right? Yes. I know they have an entire... Uh, diversity division yeah. and I'm actually having someone from CBS on uh, to talk about that you are. so so yay CBS who are you having do you know do you remember uh, yeah there's so many wonderful yeah, people it's one over of the there key women over there She's I'm like the squeaky guest. wheel over at CBS yeah. so they're always like can someone have Tony Cover to you know <laughs> I'm like, hey where are the oh, ladies that's right. you and I met at 50 women can at the CBS yes. lot oh I my forgot gosh. oh my yeah. gosh that's right that's right yes, yeah. and that's one of those things because they're like Tony clearly has something to say so yeah. like they they've been wonderful about giving me uh, a platform and couching me with the really incredible um, humans and women that are um, interested in in change and um, yeah. celebrating what the new face of CBS is going to be. You right. Know? So and, that's really exciting. And the event you and I were at 50 Women Can yes. is getting together 50 top women in entertainment mm -hmm. to help train them to go back into these companies and bring women up the ranks yeah. to expedite this yeah. so how to it navigate does, it all so it actually does change yes yeah so absolutely i think it's just so so wonderful i'm excited to be at cbs right now i think that they are making a an, an effort to um to change things up. To change things up and, yeah. have the, and have the face of CBS look different. And um, how wonderful to be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about that. So this role that you're playing now is um, really cutting edge because here it is uh, about a SEAL team, mm -hmm. which is, you know, in reality and in the show and in television is um, all male. Yes. Uh, but you are cast as this really strong military woman that works with them. Right. Um, in what capacity? Tell us a little bit about the role. Sure. So there we play a tier one. Uh, we, we tell the stories of a tier one SEAL team. So they are the highest level of, of the SEALs. Yeah, you were explaining to me they come in a couple different tiers. Yeah, but this of, would be like the most elite, yes. like the ones like, that went in and got bin Laden. Yes. There's yeah. like two tiers you get your first yeah. tier and then you, you what you do is you go through a program called buds yeah. and that's a really difficult physical um and you know mental uh, testing to get into the first tier of seals and they're right. already superhuman right right um and they just opened up buds to women two years ago oh wow and um oh so there are some actual women navy seals no there are women that have attempted to get through buds gotcha. currently so none of the physical um standards were changed when they opened it up so currently we've I think we're, there's been a handful of women that have tried to Attempted. get through yes yeah. but not to date but they're out there they're coming good and so then if after you've served as a seal um, done a tour or two you are then able to if you would like to try to go through a thing called green team and that's another level of you know, wild physical and mental testing. And if you yeah. get through that, talk then about tears. Yeah. Then you're a tier one, yeah, <laughs> tier one seal. And those are the ones that would do the yeah. captain. Yeah. I mean, the um, Captain Phillips rescue, yeah. the Osama bin Laden raid, every all of those things. So they're really um, wild, wild. Superhumans is the best way that I can think about it. So the premise of the show is them in action and you're coordinating yes. these really. Yeah, so I, play the, I play the logistics coordinator. Yeah. So I'm the person that's going to be picking out their body armor, packing their parachutes, packing their dive gear, um, watching the um, ISR, which is the drone footage, for, you know, as they're somewhere saying like, okay, someone's on your left, you know, that wow. kind of stuff. But then also. You're, you're in charge of all the live or die stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. 
it's, it's like really critical. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know, to be in this position, to be couched with a team of this caliber, you have to go through your own, you know, uh, training. They mm -hmm. don't just pick anyone. So she is a, her own um, beautiful brand of a superhuman to be with them. And I'm mm -hmm. excited to have the opportunity to portray um, just one of these women that are out there doing this incredible job every day. Right. Um, and, and are there actual women then doing what you're doing in the show? Uh, in, in real life? In real life. Oh, yes. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our show has made great efforts to um, be as accurate as possible. Well, I love that you're doing this because the show is then showing people what women are doing and in what capacity yep. uh, within the uh, SEALs. And a lot of people probably don't even know any women are involved in it. So oh, yes. this is so educational to people. There's women all over. Yeah. You know, we often have different military um, organizations that will come visit the set because it's oh, of interest. Wow. And, and they have, uh, and most of the time, it's 70, 80% women that are coming. And I bet you some young viewers are seeing you and saying, I want to do that for a living. Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. There's so many different, I think it's a, it would be, it's a great travesty to ignore the women in our military. And I think that our show is, um, is uh, doing a good job to uh, remedy that. We need yeah. to tell the women stories and the diverse women stories that are happening in the military because they're vibrant and nuanced and complex and and need some light shown on yeah. them and some celebrating of these. I kind of compare it to that amazing movie that last year or the year before Hidden Figures. Yes. Where those African American women were like really trailblazers at NASA but all these years no one even knew about right. them. That's what I love about television and film. It really does help change the world. You know, people knock Hollywood, uh, I think, around the country and stuff, but it's Hollywood that helps make changes for women, for people of all, you know, diversity, you know, yeah. uh, all religions. I mean, it helps people to see things they might not otherwise see in their own little world. It's a great equalizer, you know, and mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you give the opportunity. What I always say is I, I, I want to sit in someone else's seat. And it gives you the opportunity. And as you just mm -hmm. quietly sit in the theater in your home, you're able to see it from another perspective mm -hmm. safely without judgment. And so we, it is our job and our responsibility to continue to tell um, hard stories that challenge the viewers. Mm -hmm. And challenge our perspective, and and I'm interested in in doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm always so impressed with actors because uh, I could never learn all those lines. <laughs> People always say that. I'd you be know, like line, a, line, line. I know. Line. You know what? I, I always you, you don't actually end up learning the lines. You it's end the up just of it. You end up learning the the, mm -hmm. the general scenario, right? That you, and then the lines just sort of just come to you, well, right? You know, I'm like. Like what you would normally here. say. Yes, like Catherine, we're at we're at a diner. You've got five dollars in your pocket, and you're thirsty as hell. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Right. And then we start, you know. Yeah. And then Waiter. knowing knowing that exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then the, the the scenario unfolds to you, you know, mm -hmm. and you'd be like, oh gosh, like we're gonna order this, and you're like, I'm funny, you're like, got five dollars. You know, it, it informs yeah. you. You know. What would be your dream role? And I know that you've also done some movies. Yes. I didn't want to skip over that. Ruby Sparks and some others. Yes. Um, and I'm so happy you saw that. Yeah. Do, which do you like better, movies, TV, or do you just love both? Oh gosh. And you which know, would you like to do more of? Sure. I think that I I am I love all of the different platforms that we mm -hmm. have. Um, theater, for one, is such a gift because you're able to do things uh, linearly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I get to live a character for you know two and a half hours from start to finish mm -hmm. and not come up for air so that is exercising a, um, an actor's muscle in a really deep way you're you're mm -hmm. fully exhausted and i think it's why some people make better theater actors and some people make better television actors they're not always good at both you, I, mean, I mean not all the time not all the time that might know. work for you but i think for some people but then right? you can get an appreciation because when you see um you know television or film we f often will film out of order so when you realize that like you're like my favorite scene was at the end of the movie when they, <laughs> oh we and shot that first exactly <laughs> right yeah. and um and, and that takes a different muscle you have to do your homework in a different way right you've got to know and have lived that full story for yourself so that you can do the work right come to it you're doing the end they died you're all unhappy you to, now you're at the beginning when yeah. they met yeah you have to just be ready so and i think 
TV provides an opportunity for you to tell more more stories. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like I get to live as Lisa Davis, you know, Petty Officer Davis in SEAL Team. I get to do her day in, day out for, mm-hmm. you know, 22 episodes. Yeah. You know, and, and we'll, soon will be 44 episodes. And what a gift to be yeah. able to just live her life. Yeah. And when you're doing a film, that's such a delicious thing because it's just a moment in time. Right. You just get to peek at this one little, whether it's a week, a day, a, you yeah. know, whatever that mm-hmm. chunk is. Yeah. And so I think there's magic in all of it. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I have a, a, a limit for it. I have a, I still have a sort of r- insatiable appetite yeah. for all of it. I'm, I'm interested in all of it yeah. still. Um, I can tell that. And your energy is so strong and beautiful. Thank it's like you. you love what you're doing and you're passionate about it. And I felt that from the moment I met you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm always, I'm always wanting to do more physical things just yeah. because I think my background in musical theater, mm-hmm. I love an opportunity to work with your whole body because when mm-hmm. you're in musical theater and you're telling stories with your whole body, you move the plot forward through yeah. your, through dance, through all, all these things. And so I'm interested more in using my body be it so that's like adventure your, your, or whatever that's what your next dream would be like you want to be on mission impossible or whatever yes whatever <laughs> if it's physical i'm i'm, I'm you're interested. up for it yes and um you know my great love honestly in terms of, as a viewer okay we put that out there yes we put it into the universe <laughs> catch it if you can um, <laughs> write that letter <laughs> that's right um but i and i also love period pieces so much which is a, the great travesty because you know as a black woman it's the the, the genre that is um least used for us you know unless you be made slaves right, but if i know you things. you'll be trailblazing that too i'll find a way yeah yeah find right i mean because look at all there there's certainly amazing trailblazer uh black women in history that you could you know it wasn't wasn't the first i think the first presidential candidate or vice presidential candidate was a black woman yes she's yeah, on so, a, a I mean, stamp yeah um, let's do a movie about her yes right uh-huh there's yeah. a lot there's there's so many um yeah. Wonderful. There's countless wonderful women to tell these stories. It's just about um, getting the powers that be to yeah. know that there's an appetite for it. Right. And that's what the change that we're currently experiencing right now is to tell um, to tell a different story, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so excited about that because women want to see those movies and we are more than half the audience and we have more than 80% of the buying power. So they need to make movies for us, yes. especially for... Um, you know, well, for all age groups, um, you know, it, it, it's so the movies coming out of Hollywood still are so predominantly male oriented. But uh, there is that whole female audience they need to address. But yeah. thank goodness with more female directors, producers and writers, I think we're headed down that path. So what an exciting time for you to be an yes. actress. Well, and you know, listen, I'm making a mistake. I'm on a male, a white male dominated show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I have to just take this as such Gee, what a, a surprise. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, but such a beautiful opportunity yes. to, to be picked to tell a black female military story. What a gift. What a gift. In, yeah. in the midst of all that. Yeah. And, and, and to do it proud. Like I have such a, you know, boundless energy for Lisa Davis and telling her stories each week because I feel like I'm, you know, telling i'm doing so many women proud and and i want to mention one thing that you told me uh as we wrap up because i think it was so important yes that when they started to write this role for you yes they would have uh like responses about like if you said something kind of tough where they would like you know screech like a cat <laughs> well, you saw in early yeah. days in one of the early early days we were all just meeting each other we had yeah. a read of um our one of our scripts and i you know said one of my davis lines and davis takes no prisoners yeah which i love yeah and um i you know said the line i don't even remember what it was and you know the the organic response from the guys was wow yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and i was like wait hold up why why are we cat calling why are we cat calling when i said something smart what yeah. is that yeah. Um, and I was like, we're not going to do that. I love you. Know, we're going to think of something else. I love else. you. And, you yeah. know, my, my and wonderful from then posters on, you, have yeah. never discussed it. Since. I was going to say from then out that you, you t- said they always have a respectful response. Always. But you know always. what? But that's we what you know. We train people was... how to uh, treat us. Yeah. And, and so you're, you set that boundary for how that role was going to be 
um, exuded. Well, yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that happened in early days. We were all just meeting each other. Yeah. We were all sussing out who these characters were to each other. And they were kidding around thinking how, thinking it was fun, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. But this is great that you set the tone and, and that they got it and that they respected oh, yeah. it. And how, the, the guys are great and yeah. they, they really, you know, that, that role, we, I had to make a, a concerted effort to be sure that Lisa Davis in in conjunction with the men on that show is someone that they respect absolutely and that they love that they trust yes um you know so that is the foundation on which we stand so that you know that that story although fun to tell is like just a moment in time in the in the like grand scheme of all the other experience i've had with them which i they get that but you know what partners. it was pivotal oh yeah it was pitiful it was pit pivotal yes and uh and uh, I, I bet they appreciate it, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I know I appreciate you. Thank you. And all that you're doing, <laughs> as does the viewers. And uh, just keep making great uh, television and film and trailblazing. And well, I want your viewers also to l l tune into Corporate on, C on uh, Comedy Central because that's another show that I, I do. And it's so fun. Corporate. If they want to, okay. It's a comedy show. So if you want, if you need to, if you've got some to get your military appetite, do SEAL Team Wednesday nights. And then you can also do Corporate on Comedy Central. You can binge it. I love that. Well, thanks for make, being such an inspiration. Thanks so much and for having doing me. Doing so much good it. and too. bringing such great energy to the table. Doing it together. Yeah, exactly. Well, tune in next week. Uh, of course, we have uh, amazing women on every week, and we hope that you'll be following Tony Trucks on her uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter. You on Twitter? Uh, uh, yes, I'm on yeah. at, at Tony Trucks. And of course, Facebook. Uh, we love her and we appreciate what she's doing and I uh, hope you'll watch her shows, Corporate and SEAL Team. All right, well, we'll see you next week. Make it a great one. Hugs and happiness. Mm -hmm.